The word was musterion in the original language. What did I say that word meant? It comes to mean sacrament, and originally it was, musterion sounds like mystery. Okay, we use that term mystery a lot in the church. You've heard it in prayers and so on. Mystery is the word that begins uh, the, the notion of a sacrament in Scripture. It just gets translated into sacrament. Uh, but mystery means not that I can't talk about something, right? It means that I cannot say all there is to say about something. It means I can't stop talking about it. And the gift of confirmation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, is one of those things we can't say all there is to say. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit is God. Let me say this about, about God first. Okay? Because, you know, the bishop loves to talk about making and forming disciples. But disciples of whom? Disciples of Jesus? Disciples of of the Father, disciples of the Holy Spirit, let's understand God just a little bit better. Maybe, maybe, okay? God is himself is mystery, right? That means I could stand up here and talk and talk and talk and never fully exhaust who God is and what God should be to us. God the Father loves, correct? Because God is a communion of persons. Love can never be alone. Love is never solitary, right? Love must have an object of love. The Father loves. Who does the Father love first? I told you the question would be too hard. <laughs> the Father loves the Son, right? That's who the Father loves from all time. The Father loves the Son, and the Holy Spirit exists as the love that flows between the Father and the Son. God exists as a communion of persons from all time. And you know what happens in our baptism? We become one with the Son. We become part of Jesus. Remember, Scripture talks about that the church is the members of Christ. What do you think of when you hear member? You think of like a club? Probably. Yeah. The Kiwanis, the Knights of Columbus, whatever you think of member. But that's not what Scripture means when it says we become members of Christ. My ears are a member. My eyes are members. My nose is a member. We become so radically joined to Jesus in baptism that we become, as Scripture says, sons and daughters in the Son. Sons in the Son, daughters in the Son. We become the very children of God in Jesus Christ. That is who we are to the Father. We are His beloved. We are the object of the Father who loves. He loves the Son. Now He loves us in the Son. And that Holy Spirit that flows from the Father in the Son flows to us, between us and God. And that Holy Spirit is what we are confirming, in a sense, tonight. We are asking the Father to strengthen the Spirit that is in us, that we may be better members of Christ, that we may more fully live the intentional disciple role that we have taken up. You are confirming what your parents did at baptism, but that's not the only meaning of confirmation. The church is confirming in you that you are ambassadors for Christ. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit to go forth and be witnesses to the world. This candle right here is in the sanctuary during the Easter season. What is this candle doing here? Is it, is it preaching to us? Not right now because we're not thinking about it, but it is. It's telling us a little, it's saying three words. Do you know what those three words are? Christ is risen. So anytime you see this candle lit, it's going to be lit during the Easter season, right? It's going to be like front and center on Easter Sunday and eight days afterwards. It's saying Christ is risen. And when you come into a funeral and you see that candle lit next to the casket, you should almost want to cry. Because it's saying Christ is risen and, and so is this person who is here for their funeral. Or when you see it at a baptism, this candle gets lit during baptism. Because we arise up new with Jesus Christ in our baptism. We are made new by the grace of baptism. No longer creatures only, but what? Sons and daughters of God. If Thank you for the good answers coming from the little ones. Um, 
if God is Father to us, and God is King, right? Thy kingdom come. What are the sons and daughters of the king called? Princes and princesses. We are the royalty of the kingdom of God. We are the princes and the princesses. So what is expected of a prince and a princess when they go out into the world? Do William, William and Kate get to live kind of like they want to? Even Harry and, and Meghan, they don't quite even they try a little bit, right? People are watching them, right? People are looking to us to do the same thing that this candle does, to say Christ is risen. And he's not only risen in a general sense out there, his life is risen up in me. And so you're saying tonight, I want to be a disciple before the world. I want to be an Easter candle that proclaims the resurrection of Jesus. I want to have the Holy Spirit fill me in the way that the Holy Spirit filled the Virgin Mary that I might give birth to Christ. Not in the same way, but birth in my life that people see Jesus in me. I who was clothed with a white garment in my baptism am clothed in Christ. And many of you are wearing a white garment tonight as a symbol that your baptism is being renewed. That's why we're going to renew our baptismal promises. The Holy Spirit is mystery. God is mystery. Our faith is mystery, but it doesn't mean we can't talk about it. We have to talk about it. We have to proclaim it to the world. That's who we are. And the world needs Jesus more than ever before. Am I right? And if the world needs Jesus, he needs him through us, his disciples. Be a light. Be an Easter candle. Proclaim Jesus Christ resurrected and do it by the power of the Holy Spirit renewed and invigorated and strengthened in you by the sacrament tonight of confirmation. God bless you. Thank you.